Our series of web exclusives on Skywatch TV for the month of October dealing with the spirit realm and spiritual warfare continues today with a look at a creature who's very common at this time of year and whose image has undergone a radical transformation over the last hundred years, the vampire. Vampires have undergone a radical makeover. A hundred years ago, everyone knew vampires were monsters. Today, they're misunderstood. They're seductive, sexy, sophisticated, as likely to be cast in the role of hero in popular entertainment as not. If you know a young woman, you're probably familiar with the Twilight Saga, which has drawn millions of fans into the story of an awkward teenage girl, Bella, and her love interest, the painfully handsome, eternally young, 100-and-something-year-old vampire, Edward. Popular television series like True Blood, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Being Human, among others, are the result of a trend that began in the 1970s with the Vampire Chronicles novels of Anne Rice, the transformation of the vampire from monster into hero. But the fascination with vampires still has a dark side. A vampire subculture within the goth movement has emerged in the U.S. and Europe. In fact, inspired by a scene in the popular 1999 film Blade, blood raves, dances featuring the spraying of simulated blood over the crowd are planned this year in Amsterdam and New York. The precise origin of the vampire myth is shrouded in the mists of history. The first recorded use of the word, the old Russian upir, is found in a manuscript of the Book of Psalms that was translated into Cyrillic in the year 1047. However, demonic creatures resembling the modern vampire, evil spirits called Idimu, were part of the cosmology of ancient Mesopotamia. Our modern concept of the sophisticated aristocratic vampire stems from the early 19th century. Dr. John Polidori, an associate of Lord Byron and Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, published a story in 1819 titled The Vampire. The villain of the tale, Lord Ruthven, is clearly a precursor of Count Dracula, the central character of Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, which defined the character and mythology of the vampire as we know it today. But even in the works of Polidori and Stoker, the vampire was absolutely evil, a parasite on the body of humanity that was exterminated only with extreme difficulty and with divine assistance. The most effective weapons against the vampire, as conceived by Stoker, symbolize key elements of the Christian faith. Holy water, representing baptism, and a sharpened piece of wood, representing the cross. Now that is absolutely appropriate. While we don't know exactly where the vampire myth began, we do know that God placed special significance on blood, especially human blood, from the very beginning of creation. When Cain murdered Abel, the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. The word blood is used nearly 400 times in the Bible. And in chapter 9 of the book of Genesis, God made it clear to Noah that blood has a unique property. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. And for your lifeblood, I will require a reckoning. From every beast, I will require it, and from man. In his novel, Dracula, Bram Stoker put the words, the blood is the life, in the mouth of Dracula's victim and servant, Renfield. In the 1931 movie starring Bela Lugosi, the scripture is quoted by the Count himself. Consuming the blood even of animals was absolutely forbidden. How much more than the blood of humans? As God told Noah, a reckoning is required even from animals that shed the blood of humans. And yet, this has become the stuff of best-selling young adult novels and motion pictures. Think about this. Jesus Christ shed his blood so that his followers could have eternal life. The vampire sheds the blood of his followers so that he can have eternal life. And even that life is a lie, walking forever in darkness, unable to walk in the light of day. That's the very opposite, the very opposite of the life promised by Jesus Christ and paid for with his blood. So however you slice it, however you try to remake the image of the vampire, by definition, the vampire is the very image of Antichrist.